All right, what we're looking at here now is the SEL SP-61 forward slash M Catran is a non-linear junction detector. It is probably the most basic non-linear junction detector I've actually ever seen, if I'm being completely honest. However, it does work very effectively. So what we're going to do is going to go through this now, uh, go through all the operations of it and how it works and have a little bit of a summary at the end. So let's have a look. Firstly, before we get started, one of the things that you need to be aware of with using non-linear junction detectors, first of all, they're very expensive. So if you've bought one, you've obviously invested quite a bit of money. Even this device, although it looks old, it is actually quite expensive. But they are extremely dangerous, okay, if not used correctly, or they can be. So this here is the antenna unit. It emits a level of radiation that can be dangerous to the human body, all right? So please don't point this at any person, including yourself or any body part, even your feet, for any period more than two seconds, all right? They say five to 10 seconds is bad. So just don't point it at your feet or at your hands or at your head, face, any part of the human body at all for any period of time, okay? When it's off, it's okay. Once it's on, it is not okay. So just be aware of that. If you're sweeping an, uh, an environment where there are children uh, running around, just make the responsible person uh, aware that they cannot be there because, you know, they're gonna run in front of this thing. If they do it more than two or three times, it then becomes slightly dangerous. Another thing that you need to consider with nonlinear junction detectors is that they need to be maintained properly and regularly. The manufacturer will always give you guidelines as to when it is that they should be uh, collaborated or inspected and please ensure that that is done to maintain a level of safety and accuracy. One of the first things you might want to consider is tightening this screw here. It actually, um, oh, it's not that one, sorry, it's this one here, beg your pardon. Okay, that controls the um, sort of stiffness of this antenna unit. And then, there we go, sorry, it's turning even now, which is annoying. So these things here, the telescopic pole, as you're probably aware, is the standard really. Turn left to tighten them and right to loosen them. But this screw here, which is where it pivots, needs usually needs to be tightened. So just get a flathead screwdriver in there and tighten it as do you see fit. It's not very tight still. Okay, there you are. That's a bit better. Uh, this part here, just so whilst you're using it for ease, it shows you right in front of you, because obviously that's where you'll be looking in this direction. It shows you um, the RSSI, which is the receiving signal strength indicator. Uh, and it has it for both harmonics, the second and third harmonics. All right, so I think the top row is in red and the bottom is green, just so it makes it easier. And that will show you you know, what's being received, all right? So we'll go into more detail about that in a moment. On the back of the unit, just to show you where this is, that's the control panel. On the back of the unit, it has a plug there, which is the charging port, essentially. Um, the battery can be removed, uh, but it's quite a difficult thing to do, I think. Uh, the instructions will be given. I can't remember exactly how the battery is removed, but you shouldn't really have to actually remove the battery. It comes with this big charging unit, here, but the wires are all, all over the place at the moment, but basically that goes into there, plug it in, screw it on, and then charge it accordingly. Very straightforward. So now we're gonna take a look at the control panel, which is on the main unit body itself, right at the top here. Uh, the, the, it doesn't have the power switch on there, which is relatively helpful, I suppose. You can't accidentally turn it off whilst trying to configure the controls. But what we do have are a number of options here. The first of all, which is the most obvious, the volume buttons up and down, that essentially just tells, uh, controls the, the output volume. So that's not gonna affect the operation of the NLJD itself. I personally always have these things uh, low on the volume because I'm one of these people that just don't like the clicking or beeping sounds. I'd rather, if, if any option at all, I'd rather a vibrating option. Obviously this doesn't have that, so. Those, yeah, volume up and down, okay? It's your preference as to what you have. It does actually come with headphones, which a lot of operatives tend to prefer. 
Um, it's also a lot more convenient for the client who, whose house or whose office you're in, if, if, if it's an office environment, especially people are trying to work, um, but not ideal to have people there, you know, whilst this has been operated anyway. So that is entirely your choice. What gets confusing here is on the left hand side, there are four LEDs, okay? But just to clarify the top one, these top two actually aren't controlled by the RX button. The top two are test and bat, which is short for battery test, shows that there's a malfunction. So if that comes up more than once, there's a problem with the device. It could be the battery level, um, but the battery level is also indicated with its own respective LED. So, you know, it becomes quite obvious what the problem is. If it's just a test, but, uh, the test LED lighting up on its own, there's clearly an issue that needs to be resolved before carrying on. And then basically the number, the button there, RX, is the, the receiving number, essentially. So it's the re it means the receiving path, and X is just for number. So receiving, and uh, T is for transmitter. This is, so TX is the transmitter, basically what the signal is sending, what signal it sends out, and RX is the signal which it receives. Again, X is just the number. Um, but to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter. I don't think it matters what you have it on. All, all it's saying here is, and it's more, it's more complicated than it needs to be actually. I think this is slightly over, not over engineered, but I wouldn't have this as an option if I was to design a device. But it's saying, do, do you wanna, do you want to prioritize the signals from the second harmonic or the third harmonic? It doesn't really matter because on the display, as you can see, just where are we? Just on that scale there, on the actual device itself. Here I'm pointing it to be clear on this this unit here. It will show you what it's receiving, regardless of which one you have it on. The difference is, if I have it on the second harmonic, the signal that I'm getting back in terms of the audio signal is going to be highlighting the second harmonic. If I turn it on the third, it's just going to be doing the third. But actually, the visual uh, indication is going to be the same on both. So what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to power on the device. I'm stood well back from it. And as you can see, it's facing slightly away from me and behind it, I don't know if you can see that actually, there's the charging unit. So that's obviously an electrical component that it should pick up on whether it's concealed or not. So let me get that down there for you. So just to clarify this, the TX is measured by this sort of scale that you can just about make out there. Uh, and the lower the LED is, the weaker the transmitting signal is basically is how strong you want it to be in other words the distance that you want it to detect so we haven't actually measured what the distances are from i.e the first setting to how it close in other words how close it needs to be to detect the device i would probably suggest having it either number two or number three because number four is probably too strong number one is probably too weak this being number one this being number four and so two or three are probably going to be relatively strong enough. What I would suggest you do actually is have an electrical device in front of it, put it on number two, okay, and you'll be able to do a proximity test. Yeah, move it backwards and forwards. You can see that there, there's a device there. Move the device forwards and backwards on both settings and figure out what it is you're comfortable with. The middle option is basically asking you it's, well, it, it tells you there, but in, in essence, how you want the um, demodulation to sound, i.e. what sound do you want this to, to come from this? Do you want the, the clicks? Do you want the uh, second harmonic demodulation, i.e. The, the squelch noise that you'll hear that's actually quite annoying? Uh, and, and that's that. I personally would have it on RSSI because that gives you the clicks. I find all the, the sort of white noise really annoying but it's a personal preference it actually doesn't really matter what you have it on and then the receiving signal strength basically is saying do you want to prioritize the second harmonic or the third harmonic actually it doesn't really matter because what it's saying is if you have it on RSSI and we're getting more second harmonic um, being received or it's detecting more second um, harmonics, then that is the noise that you're going to. You're going to receive more clicks if it's picking up more second harmonics, if that makes sense. And if you've got it on third, it's going to click more for third. But actually, on the visual indicator here, you know that's what that's what it has. So it shouldn't really make much of a difference what you have it on. It's just about what's being received through the spot, well, the speaker, which you can still even you can still control. 
The main thing that you need to be aware of is how strong the signal being sent out is, and that's the transmitting X, the transmitting number. Okay, again, probably best in a house or in an office to have it on um, the second or third option. All right, that's just the volume control, but it looks like a volume uh, indicator there. If, for example, there are hard to reach areas, you can't reach the ceiling, for example, because they're very, very high, you might want to have it on the top level. And that's it, so it's pretty basic. So just to clarify exactly how we use this device, it comes with a strap actually that's designed to go over your shoulder, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, you'll probably have it on the opposite shoulder to which you're handling the NLJD with. I'm gonna turn it around and show you the on and off switch, which is there, I'll, I'll power that up in a moment. The control panel is at the top there, as you can see. And the device here has a tele telescopic um, option, which you can use. I, this obviously needs to be done and adjusted so that you're comfortable with it before use. I'm gonna leave it like this just for the sake of uh, demonstration purposes, all right? And then you adjust this. This needs to be, by the way, parallel with the wall, all right? Do not put your hand or any body part in front of this when it's on, all right? But in essence, it needs to be parallel with the wall. If I'm doing a table, I need to adjust it accordingly um, and I do it on the table there, all right? So it needs to be parallel with the area in which it is searching. As you can see, I've got an electrical component or electrical device in front of it on the radiator over there. First thing I'm going to do, turn it on. Once it's turned on, these things usually need a couple of seconds to calibrate. Once I've done that, the volume I'm gonna leave as it is, just for the purpose of this video, I want in real life. Then I'm going to change the transmitting frequency, okay, and I'm gonna put it on the third option and I've got it on RSSI because I'd rather listen to the clicks than the alternatives, which I'm just gonna show you actually. See, they're not nice. The clicks are much better. And I'm just gonna leave it on the second harmonic. It doesn't matter if it's on second or third. As you can see, pressing that button only changes the top two. I don't know if you can actually see that. So pressing that is only gonna control those. The test, that needs to stay off. It's gonna flicker slightly once I go from second or third. Uh, the mode is, I'm gonna have it on RSSI, okay, and the TX, I'm gonna have it on probably the second option now, all right, and it's using that volume control thing there to indicate how strong it is. Then I'm going to move the NLJD closer so you can see that the lights there, you can, you can see the, the LED indicators on the device. I'm moving it away, I'm gonna move it back, and it's picking up the device, all right? So I'm moving it here backwards a little bit, so it's just about picking it up, as you can see on the LED indicators there. So that's probably strong enough. I'm gonna turn it up and watch. So now I can move further away and it's picking it up even more, but it's sending out a stronger signal. All right, so that's it. Move it away, it's going to stop again. As I move it towards, you can see the LEDs lighting up there even stronger than they were before. And that's because the transmitting signal is now on a higher setting. And that's basically it. To turn it off, keep it away from you and switch it off. Very straightforward, very basic to use. The key thing you have to remember is whilst it's on, avoid pointing it at your own or anyone else's body parts.